Good day there viewers, my name is Cliff and welcome to my channel called Vintage Time. In today's episode of How to Cut Gemstones, once again we will be featuring topaz. There are all different types of topaz and the piece I'm holding now is a piece I found which is white Australian topaz and you can find this in various creek systems in Australia. Most natural topaz like this is usually white or it can be a champagne or a light blue colour but there are other types of topazes which are iridated which are sky blue, swiss blue and london blue and those type of topaz are usually heat treated. I'll drop in a description of these types of topaz. I featured topaz before in several other videos but from a gem cutter's point of view it is simply one of the best gems to cut and polish. But also from a gem buying point of view it is such an underrated gem and I really do think people who purchase gems should highly invest their money in good quality topaz. In this part of the video now I'm going to do what we call a preform and this is a very important stage of the fastening process. I'm going to be removing a little bit of junk material on this gem and also shape it to size. So the type of gem I'll be cutting is what is called the square Portuguese cut and I'll drop in a design it's called the square Portuguese, but normally this is a typical square Portuguese style cut. This particular design which is done by Marco Voltolini can be acquired off the Gemology project and you can download it just in a PDF file. Meanwhile I'm still continuing on with the preform however I'm finding that there is a lot of junk inside of this gem. Luckily I found it myself so I didn't have to pay for it but there is milky material and not only that there's a huge piece of rutile in the core of the gem. As you can see in this piece of topaz I'm preforming, there's a little piece of rutile embedded in the gem. And what rutile is, it is titanium oxide mineral and it has a chemical composition of TiO2 and it's often found in igneous and metamorphic and sedimentary rocks. Unfortunately, trying to grind out this piece of rutile has substantially made the gem smaller. So finally the preform is complete, I've removed any unwanted material and the rutile. The gem in size is a lot smaller but that's fascinating for you. Fortunately I found this gem so it doesn't cost me anything but I do have a piece of clean material. So the gem is attached to a brass stop stick and the way we attach it is by glue. I use a two part epoxy glue, Devcon and that's a good quality glue and I just let that cure overnight and I mount it in the transfer jig. Don't be too stingy by not using enough glue because if you do the gem will almost likely fall off the top. So often with square shapes or rectangle shapes you need to shape out the gem first at 90 degrees however with this design we just set the protractor angle at 45.53 degrees and we're going to be cutting 16 facets on the pavilion. So I'm about to cut out the first set of pavilion facets and I'm using a fairly fine disc in fact I'm using an 800 grit disc. Try to avoid using a 100 grit or an 80 grit disc on smaller gems like this. If you do, you may most likely tear the gem off the top and you don't want that to happen. The other problem you'll find with using coarse discs on smaller gems is that you get major chipping on the edges of the stone and they become very hard to remove later on when you're using the finer grade discs. As a side note, topaz has such a unique feel when faceting. It is so different than any other gemstone. When you're grinding away it has a very silky smooth feel on the disc and you're not likely to expect as many mishaps as you do with other gems. If you're a beginner I would suggest that start learning on topaz. It's such a wonderful gem to facet. Forget about learning on television glass or glass. In fact many gem clubs in Australia will not allow you to even to cut TV glass because of occupation health and safety rules. 
Many of the early television tubes, the TV glass, was impregnated with lead and many facetters actually used to learn on it, but these days we know a lot better about the effects of lead on our health. So the next step is to shape the gem, getting four even sides, so we need to set the angle of the fastening arm at 90 degrees and then we'll rotate through the index wheel where we have indexes, in my case it's 64, 32, 16 and 48. If you have a 96 index wheel, it will be 96, 24, 48 and 72. So I've shaped the gem out to a square now and as you can see the sides are nice and even. I started with the 800 grit diamond disc and then I smoothed it out with the 3000 grit diamond disc. So in this scene here, I've used a 3000 grit diamond disc at 73.31 degrees to set the girdle level and you can see that I've cut four facets to even out the girdle. In the following scenes, I've cut the last two tiers of pavilion facets at 43.15 degrees and 41 degrees respectively, I've only used a 3000 grit diamond disc. So the next step is I'm going to be polishing the topaz using a 1.5 micron diamond paste and just using a little bit about the size of a match head, lightly smear it onto the base of the Perspex lap. I find that using Perspex with the diamond paste is very fast and very efficient. Here I've polished one of the girdle facets and all the other girdle facets remain unpolished and what I've done I've set the protractor angle at 89.5 degrees which makes it really simple to polish the girdle. In the following scenes you'll see all the various stages of the pavilion facets being polished.
So we're ready to facet the crown, but in order to do this, there's a little bit of preparation as we need to transfer the dop sticks. The original dop stick needs to be removed, however an other dop stick needs to be glued onto the polished pavilion side of the gem. Once again the same epoxy glue is used and the transfer jig is used to make this transfer possible. I remove the original dop stick by heat, sometimes I also use a heated scalpel blade. So I'm starting off the process of fastening the crown and it's going to be a step cut. If you look at the original design you can see there's three tiers on the crown. I'm going to do the first step cut as a quick rough out with an 800 grit disc then smooth out the facets with a 3000 grit disc. After the first step or the first tier of the crown has been faceted, the remaining steps of the crown need to be faceted with a very fine grey diamond disc. The challenge will be also that each step has to be perfectly aligned and that the facet meet points meet perfectly. To see these intricate meet points you need to use high magnification. I use a Bellamo loop to do this. In the following scenes you'll see all the crown facets being cut with a 3000 grit diamond disc and that would be the side facets, corner facets and the table facet. So the table has been polished, once again we are using the same polishing compound and using the same polishing disc which is a Perspex disc. Here's a little trick for beginners to help them find the flat of the facet they wish to polish. Get a marking pen, mark the facet you wish to polish, in this case I've marked out the corner facet, lightly rub it on the polishing disc course don't have the disc rotating. Here you can see where the contact point is where I've rubbed on the polishing disc. In this case it's not quite flush so I need to cheat a little bit to the right to polish this facet. In the following scenes you'll see me polish all the facets of the crown in various stages. So this means we're getting closer to the end of the video. Please like and subscribe, leave some comments and don't forget to watch the final reveal. The final reveal does no justice to how good Topaz looks in real life. If you're buying gems I suggest that you buy from a good gem cutter and buy from a reputable source because Topaz in my opinion is simply a king of all the gems. It has a high refractive index and really does have diamond like appearance. So until next time everybody, take care and I'll see you later.